In this video you will learn what is Angular Signals and how we can use it in the nearest future. So what is Signals inside Angular? Actually this is the new way of writing your code, because previously we wrote either just variables inside our components and we rendered them, or we had streams with RxJS and we also rendered them. But to understand better why do we need Angular Signals, I must tell you some theory. So how Angular is working? We have such thing which is called lifecycle, and essentially when something changes, Angular doesn't really know what changed, maybe some event happened or some value was changed in some component. Angular is running digest cycle from the top to the bottom of all components, and it checks every single component for the changes. And as you can understand, this is really a magical process, because you don't need to do anything, you simply change some values, and then Angular re-renders the whole application. But when you have lots of components and lots of things to check, Angular becomes really slow. This is why we are getting things like on push change detection, which is not really a fix, but more like a hack, so Angular won't check that much. This is why now we have something new, which is called Angular Signals. So in comparison how change detection works, signals are working completely different. You have a signal where you are changing a value, and you have some consumers of the signal, which are notified directly when you change the value. So Angular doesn't need to traverse the whole components tree in order to check if we did some changes. So this actually must bring our Angular applications on the next level. So can we already use Angular signals? We can not, but if you will install Angular 16, and at the moment of this video we have a stable Angular 15, then you can test it out, which actually means you will get Angular signals in the nearest future, this is not just something which is planned, it will be released in the next version. So here I have an Angular 16, and let's try to create a signal here. So inside our app component I just want to create a variable title, and in order to do that I am writing word signal, and as you can see it creates a signal inside our component, and here we can give a default value. What we are getting here is a setable signal of type string. Because we already created a title, it makes a lot of sense to create an input and bind it to this title, so we can check how we can change this value and read from this value. This is why here I want to create input type text, and here I want to bind a value. How we are doing that? We can use our signal title with round brackets. This means that we want to read a value from our signal. After this we are creating an event, it will be key up event, and let's create here a function change title, where inside we are passing our event. And after this I want just to call title with round brackets, so we can see the value of the title inside our component. Now let's create this change title function, so here we are getting our event of type event. And now here we want to read a value, essentially our title. So here we can write event.target, and we must type or set it to HTML input element dot value. So we successfully got our title from the input, now we must set it inside our signal. For this we can call this dot title dot, and we have several methods, actually three of them. We have mutate, update, and set. And actually set is the easiest, we simply throw inside the new value, overriding everything that we have inside. This is why here I am setting the value, and it is the title. Let's check in browser, as you can see here is our input, I am typing something here, and here is the value, directly rendered inside our template. Which actually means, with the help of the signal, we rendered the value here inside our input, and we changed it through this title set. So this is the basic work with signal, as you can see this is not difficult. But now let's create a signal for our array of users, so typically you will have something like users inside your component, and this is also a signal, and here we can provide a data type. And as you can see on the top I already prepared user interface, this is why here we can set that this is an array, and by default it is an empty array. Now let's say that we want to change this array, in order to do that I will write implements on init, because I want to simulate that we are changing it from API. 
So here we have our NGO needed and we can right here set timeout and just change a value after 2 seconds. So in order to do that we can write this user set just like we did previously and provide inside an object with id for example 1 and name foo. What we can do now we can just console log these users with round brackets. But here we also want to increase our timeout for example to 2 seconds. Let's check this out, I am reloading the page, we don't have any users and after 2 seconds we are getting here our user with id1 and foo. So now you know how set is working, what alternatives do we have? Here we can also write this users.update and actually update is working differently because we are getting here our previous state. This is the way here I can write previous users and we can use this data in order to add new element to the array for example. Here we can return just an array and here I am spreading previous users and after this I want to add an object with id1 and name foo. So as you can see here we want to use update if you want in your mutation to use the previous value. And as you can see in browser it is working in exactly the same way. And the last method here that I really don't like is mutating of our current value. And in order to do that we are writing this users mutate and we are getting here not previous value but current value, current users let's say. And here we can write for example current users push and here we want to add our user id1 and name foo. And essentially this code is completely mutable, we are not producing here a new value, we are mutating our current state. And in this case it is working in exactly the same way. One more thing that you must know regarding signals, we have their effects. And if you are familiar with React, we have their such thing, which is called use effect which actually means we are triggering something when some value changes. This is why here what we can do, we can create title, change effect and here we are assigning effect. And as you can see it is also coming from angular core and here inside we are just providing a function which must do something. In our case we can simply write here console log title change effect and here we can read the value of our title with round brackets. As you can see here in browser we are getting first of all a single title change effect because on initialize we have a set and actually this signal initialization sets the default value and our effect will also be triggered. Additionally to that every single time when we are changing our title we are getting our effect because our effect is being running after updating of our value. Which actually means if you want to do some side effects this is exactly for that. And the last thing that you need to know is computed. Here we can create something like for example users total and here we are using function computed which is based on some other signal. For example here we can return a function and here we are writing these users with round brackets dot length and actually this line will create another signal of type number because we are getting here length and it is based on this signal users which actually means every single time when we update signal users this is our consumer and this users total will be updated and after this if for example we will render it here inside our template our template will also be updated because our signal changed. As you can see in browser we are getting here 1 because we pushed one user inside our array. So this is how we are using signal. Now the last question, I want to share my feelings regarding signals in comparison to RxJS for example. And actually I understand that signals is much easier for people to start than to start with RxJS. This is true, you can master signals in 10 minutes. But you can't really do that with RxJS because there is a lot of knowledge to learn and a lot of different functions and combinations. Essentially RxJS is a super powerful tool but it is not suitable for beginners. The main problem that I see is Angular leverages RxJS a lot and is using it inside a lot. And now we are getting something completely new which is called signals and now the question is how we will use together Angular, Signals, RxJS and if it still will be valid at all. Or we will just throw away RxJS completely and just stick with the signals. So from my point of view introducing a completely new layer of abstraction inside Angular is questionable. But this is what we are getting in the nearest future and you need to know how to use that. 
And actually, if you are interested to know how to create standalone components inside Angular, which you can already do, make sure to check this video also.